All right, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna to tell you about the life of a stem cell scientist, that's my life, and how we make stem cell derived cardiomyocytes. I'm Martha Floy from the Palachuk Lab, and with me is Aaron Simmons. We're two graduate students in the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So the first question is, what are stem cells? Well, stem cells are defined as two things. They are, have a self-renewing capacity, so they can expand indefinitely. And the second is they're pluripotent, so they're able to become all cell types of the body. So when we think about this, we think, okay, maybe we need something that's found very early in development. And that's what's called the blastocyst. So it has very few cells. And then if you actually isolate a specific part of that called the inner cell mass, that's the cells that have the proliferative capability uh, developmentally to become all the cells of your body. And Jamie Thompson, a researcher here at University of Wisconsin, is the first one who discovered how you can culture those um, and really furthered the field into making the stem cell derived cell types for lots of different types of your, uh, cells in your body. Well, what if you don't want to get a blastocyst? What if we want to have something from an adult patient that matches their cell types, has their DNA? Well, how do we do that? Well, they came up with this new idea. So they could actually isolate skin cells or really else any cell type of your body, put those on a plate, they grow really well, and then hit them with some defined factors, including nanog and oct4, and then they make these induced pluripotent stem cells. So these look a lot like the embryonic stem cells, and it's thought that they can become all cell types of the body. The last one, which we'll talk about briefly, is adult stem cells. Now there's some debate if these are really uh, stem cells because they're not pluripotent in the sense that they can make any cell type of the body. Perhaps they're muscle specific, so they only make muscle cell types. Well, what cell type are we interested in? Well, we're interested in making cardiomyocytes. Uh, what does that mean? So cardio stands for heart, myo, muscle, and site, cell. So think of these as the muscle cells of the heart, the ones that are important for your contraction. Now, why do we care about the heart? Well, the heart is the first organ to form during development. So this is a sonogram of uh, a, a person in development uh, at about six weeks uh, post conception. And so you can see it's very small, but it's really important even early on into pumping blood through the circulatory system and providing nutrients to other parts of your body. Now, why do we want to make these stem cell derived cardiomyocytes? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first is studying development. Obviously, we can't really, you know, cut up a baby's heart to see what it's like. So studying early stages of development. Uh, the next parts are studying diseases, so cardiomyopathies and channelopathies, and also you can do some drug screening to try to figure out, you know, what kind of drug should we use that has the least cardiotoxicity or injury to the heart. Uh, there's been some work also in infectious diseases, for example, COVID-19 and how it affects the heart. And the last sort of thing, topic that we'll discuss briefly is cell therapies. So after a heart attack, you lose a lot of cells in your heart. So the idea is maybe we can replace those cells with stem cell derived cardiomyocytes. All right, the next thing I'd like to do is take you through a tour of our lab. So this is the stem cell culture room. This is where we spend most of our time. On the left, you can see some biosafety cabinets and a microscope in the middle. And then on the far right, you can see some centrifuges and fridges where we keep our reagents. The next video um, is of us feeding cells. So every day we have to change the, what's called the media. So think of this as the Gatorade or Powerade for the cells. It has all of the sugars and all the nutrients that they need to survive. So every day we suck up the media and put on new media and it takes a lot of time. It really is a huge part in the cell manufacturing. And how we make these cells and differentiate them is through a few pathways and adding different kinds of media to the cells so we can nudge them to be a cardiomyocyte rather than a brain cell. Now I'll turn it over to Aaron. Thanks, Martha, for that great introduction. 
Now I'll take you through a closer look at various aspects of our research into these stem cell drive cardiomyocytes. But first, I'd like to introduce you to a workhorse of the lab, the microscope. Far beyond a normal microscope that you've probably used in lab before, our microscope is comprised of numerous specialized parts. I'll mention a few of them here. First, at the blue arrow, you can see our microscope is equipped with a high-speed, high-resolution camera, which allows us to take images that we can later analyze. The red arrow points to the automated motorized stage where we can place our specimen that we're going to image and move it around very accurately with the control pad shown by the purple arrow. The white arrow shows the computer that controls the entire system, allowing us to change anything we want to from the magnification, which wavelength of light, even how long or how often we take an image. Another very special part of our system is the environmental chamber at the black arrow. This allows us to mimic the cell culture incubator and image cells while they are still alive over extended periods of time. Finally, the orange arrow shows the fluorescent light source, which enables us to look at specific wavelengths of light that can mean many different things based on how we prepare our specimens. Here, you can see the microscope in action on the left, using many different wavelengths of light from the fluorescent source. You'll see that we're doing this in the dark so that we don't have ambient light adding background to our images. Because we've stained these cells, uh, the nuclei of these cells in blue, and we've got red and green markers for cardiomyocyte specific proteins, we can actually look within the cells and see exactly how these proteins are organized. You'll see in this image, we have many cardiomyocytes, but there are many cells that have blue nuclei, but are not staining for the cardiomyocyte markers, showing that we actually have a mixed population of cells. Furthermore, we can use the environmental chamber to continuously image our cells for several days as they transition from stem cells into cardiomyocytes. This video is composed of images taken every four hours for about eight days of culture. Hopefully you can appreciate the large changes these cells are undergoing over this time frame as they go from being stem cells all the way to being fully differentiated cardiomyocytes. And as you've probably been wondering, once we successfully differentiate our cells into cardiomyocytes, you might imagine you know, your heart beats, and these are heart cells. Um, so indeed, these cells actually do begin to spontaneously beat once they become cardiomyocytes. And you can see that here in this real-time video. Finally, we can label these live cells with a dye that turns green whenever there's large amounts of calcium present, which based on what we know about the biochemistry of beating cardiomyocytes, we, we can see that there are large bursts of calcium every time the cells beat, as you can see here with the, the bright flashes of green. We hope this video today has provided you with a nice glimpse into the world of the stem cell scientists, the fun cells we're able to work with and create, the amazing tools we get to use, and many of the things that we do every day in our quest to advance science and improve the world for future generations.